it's just me who imagines the outro music after we say bye. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I um, I'm actually planning on. Um, I think I, I picked down my bass here the other day, and I just put it on and tried to figure out uh, the basic uh, bass notes. I didn't really get a grip to it, and I didn't have time to really get into it. But then I also, it would have been cool to to actually learn to play it on the organ. So. Oh yeah, but I'll, I'll have to wait until an evening that I'm home alone, uh, pour myself a glass of whiskey, and then just put the tune on uh, repeat, <laughs> leave the phone, and then just start playing with the organ to try to figure out <laughs> how to actually play it. Get the unplugged version. Yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. I saw on uh, on Instagram that our old friend friend Chloe has a. Build challenge, the IIS build is. challenge storage. Yeah, <laughs> that's uh, the 9th of June is the end of it. So that's that's after Maker Central. So I mean that's plenty of time. And it's like two weeks or something like that. You think of entry? If I can think of something to do. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, it, it seems like, like the rules are rather. Uh, not that hard, so, and I'm I'm re I'm I think I'm good enough to try to coax something into those. She has two uh, two different entry levels, doesn't she? Isn't one? Uh, yeah, one for one? C's, one for newbie makers, yeah. and then the rest. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah. Which, which category are you entering as KJ? <laughs> That depends uh, <laughs> that, <laughs> how it turns out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I can. I, I yeah. thought of entering, but I haven't really. All my projects that I have planned is new from scratch, and I have actually bought the material specific for that, so I'm, I'm so disqualified <laughs> that you can be. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it, so I, I need to find an idea to use some uh, scrap uh, or something that you upcycle. That was also a road yeah. worthy of uh, going down. Yeah. I have a plan. Um, so my drill press is a little bit too short on the bench at the moment. So I'd quite like to raise it up. And if I'm raising it up, I'd quite like to put a drawer or something underneath it, which yeah. holds the drill bits. But um, at the moment, the drill press is at the doctor's being mended. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny that you say that it's at the doctor's. But what kind of doctor do you yeah. take a drill press to? Yeah, drill it's doctor. Back, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's gone. It's gone back to the people I bought it from, and uh, I'm not. I'm not going to say it, but uh, you could have gotten yeah. the Bosch, but no, you had to buy the other one. <laughs> yeah, I I really regret it. It was really stiff to use right from the word go, and then it suddenly freed up a couple of weeks ago because a piece of metal fell out of it and then as you <laughs> as you're lowering it down i mean it was much easier to lower down but it did a little twist motion as it was doing it <laughs> <laughs> that does not sound good <laughs> no but that no. i i don't have a height problem but i thought the same as well because i uh i don't remember his name but i think he's a german maker and i think most of his content is his workshop infrastructure and everything is bosch and he uh, builds his own furniture with bosch logo on it and everything so he's even worse than me but he made like a drawer for that the drill to keep the bits in and uh, i've been thinking the same thing because i now have them just rattling around in the drawer so yeah same <laughs> yeah <clears throat> I have one of those uh, thing you have in a in the kitchen drawer for knives and forks and that sort of thing. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. So it's I mean it's metal, wood, and concrete. <laughs> <laughs> that was Everyone, my everything mixed. <laughs> that was my plan as well. I was thinking about making three drawers and of course just use the CNC to to route out the different sizes of drills and then of course it's metal, concrete, and wood and 
of course, I still I still need a big drawer because I all have these uh, big uh, hole saw drills and uh, like yeah, those are always the hammer drill uh, concrete things. I mean, it's used twice every decade, but uh, I can't get myself to get rid of them, so I need to store them somewhere. But yeah, I think a, a drawer underneath the drill would be brilliant as you know just with the force and the bits in it i use those a lot and then just the regular you know um brad point drill bits as well yeah, yeah. Really the ones you use much more than yeah the everyday use so yeah say. exactly yeah no but um, i say the drill's got to come back from the doctors first <laughs> before i can make that otherwise it's gonna just be a drawer isn't it <laughs> Your drill is not at a doctor's. It's going up to a farm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> farm on, on the, the countryside. countryside yeah. Yeah. Living a happy life forever. <laughs> yeah. Most likely you're getting a new one. I mean. <laughs> yeah, hopefully they'll put the Bosch, Bosch badge on it for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh dear. It's such a palaver to send it back as well. You had to um, package it. It was funny because you had to do a video of why, what was wrong with it to start out with. And then okay. you have to package it. And, you know, who's got a box the size of a pillar drill hat lying around at home? You, you, you threw away the, the box? <laughs> of course I threw away the box. <laughs> <laughs> I do the same as well. And I, I, I throw them away even before I test the equipment. So, yeah, I mean, exactly. I, I haven't tested the yeah. plasma cutter yet, but the box is long gone. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I ha that's uh, some kind of therapy for me. I ha really have to more or less destroy the box so I can't keep it. Yeah, I mean, and I I often if there's sometimes there's some some kind of good information on the box. It's this kind of thing with this wattage and that sort of thing. Then maybe I I cut that part out. So, okay, now I have the important <laughs> thing, and now the box is ruined, so I have to throw it away because if the box is it's still a box, then I might try and keep it. So I have to kill it, not for myself, not be able to keep it. <laughs> yeah, it, I think I have a thing for boxes, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, no, we were, it was a week and a half finding a box for it. It's gone back and they've said that um, if they think it's my fault, then I will be charged for get, fixing this thing. And I, I pretty much have proof of all its uses on, ta on video on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to go there, mate. It's going to end up on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> and the piece of metal that fell out of it is taped to the top as well. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. <laughs> uh, you can always do a review slash reaction to whatever comes out of it. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but for anybody out there considering the uh, Shipak drill press, I wouldn't recommend it. The shit pack. <laughs> shit pack, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, as a brand, I they, I think that it's the same factory who makes the the Bosch uh, pillar drill as well. I think if you pick the, if you take the plastic covers off, I think they are the same. I mean the pl the plastic cover and the the shit box has the the three spokes <laughs> instead of the wheel, um, but it other has than two, that, two spokes, only two. Oh yeah, it's yeah, like the yeah. S. All right, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, that's right. right. Oh, that's crap. Maybe they they make the, <laughs> the they make those out of the the rejects from the the Bosch line. But oh no, this is uh, yeah. some fault on it. You put it on the side. Yeah, I can take that and build my own. <laughs> yeah, smack a Shepach logo on it and <laughs> send it to the stores. <laughs> That's how I would do it at least. Have you two bought any tools you regret buying ever? My instant gut reaction was, oh yes, and but I can't really remember what triggered it. <laughs> Plasma cutter. <laughs> I mean, in your case, KJ, was it the seventh angle grinder? Or... <laughs> no, I mean, no, the I, the really big ass angle grinder, the uh, what's it called, uh, two hundred twenty millimeter, the big disc one. That's yeah. I have not had any use for that, so that was not a. I mean, it's nice to have a big beefy one, but I've not yeah. had any use for it. I think you'll get some use out of it when you do your paving. If you have to cut any of the slabs, that is. Hopefully not. No? Uh, okay. But yeah. Um, but otherwise, I, I, 
got a corner clamp early on. That was really shit. Yeah. You only bought one, I bought eight. (laughs) (laughs) I I did the same. I think they had a sale a few years ago, so I think I got ten. Like these uh, speed clamps from uh, Bucko or what they're called. And I think I went back with two or three of them, and now there's a fourth one that's uh, it's not holding its grip anymore and of course the, the company is really nice i just bring them over and yeah i just take two new ones but at some point i, I don't want to swap them out for another similar one no. um, but i actually did buy i bought a jigsaw from bosch uh, a few years ago and that was useless because it only had a on and off switch for your thumb and then somewhere else they had placed a wheel to regulate the speed. So you had to move your grip to regulate the speed. You <laughs> basically had to use both your hands. So I, I sold it. Of course, I sold it for almost what I bought it for. So uh, And then I bought the one with the, the bigger one with the trigger that you can actually adjust the speed with your finger because you want that where you're going around tight corners. You don't want to have to fiddle with both arms on it to regulate the speed up and down. So yeah, that, that was a really crappy one. And also the, um, the handheld, the router that they have is also really crap. It's basically just for roundovers and it has a weird shape that's supposed to fit into your palm, but it's, Oh, yeah, totally that, yeah. useless for anything so and they don't have a decent battery one so i'm i'm drooling over the devault and now that they have a a conversion for the battery pack as well i'm that is probably ending up in my workshop within the year why is that that used tools have such a high price tag on them why are people willing to pay so much for used tools I mean, almost the same as buying them new. Yeah. Is it just me that thinks that's a bit weird? Yeah, for the, for the top brands, you, yeah, definitely, that's what they go for, isn't it? Yeah, but it's it's weird because I I buy tools not necessarily because I need them right now, but I know I have a list in my head of tools that I want, and if they come on sale. Like I know, oh, now it's on sale. That's a good deal because I, I uh, checked them out. You know the price time. point, yeah. yeah. And then, of course, I, I did that with both the the jigsaw and, of course, the the router. I bought them on a very cheap sales deal. And of course, when I sell it again, I, I sell it at roughly the same price. And then, of course, someone else thinks, oh, that's a good deal, and I get almost all my money back. And yeah. I don't use them very hard. I don't use them very often. I'm not a professional uh, tradesman, so I and I always keep them in the box with all the parts and so on. So of course, if you showcase that when you're selling it, it's really easy to sell them. Yeah. You mentioned the jigsaw. Do you use your jigsaw much? I don't use mine since I got a bandsaw. To be fair, just for the very very occasional thing that you can't <laughs> fit in the bandsaw. I, I <laughs> when I cut things on the CNC, uh, you have these small tabs to keep the things yeah. in place. So I, the jigsaw is brilliant for cutting <laughs> cutting uh, the parts okay. loose. Um, but, but I use it for uh, like rough cutting, uh, of course, and taking off large chunks of material around corners and so on. And yeah. uh, of course, when I built the uh, when I built the food truck for the kids, where you don't have to be very precise about anything, is very nice. You just you trace a line and you just sort of follow that. And but yeah, it's not getting very much use. If you're going to make something decent, uh, a jigsaw is not the tool. Have you man- uh, ever managed to get a straight cut with a jigsaw? <laughs> yes, <laughs> with. Uh, with a straight edge. With a yeah. straight edge. But then, of course, if you push it too fast or if you don't have the correct blade, it always bends a bit so it cuts yes. an angle. Yeah. So it's... Uh, I mean, if you're going to get a straight cut, then I use, use the plunge saw. So, no, it doesn't get very much use. But in the few cases where you need it, it's really handy. So, yeah. I don't yeah. use it much either. I mean, I, I haven't even considered that you actually can change the speed on it. <laughs> so it's I have to just... look at the. I think yeah. I, we have two of them. 
see if they have some regulation knob. <laughs> you say adjust the speed on it. It's like a the sander. Do, does anybody ever adjust the speed on their sander? It's always on max, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, sanding Quite is boring, possibly, yeah. so you want it to be over quick. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, coarse <laughs> paper and max speed. Yeah. That's uh, the <laughs> setting, yeah. I think mine has seven speeds. I mean, what is one for? <laughs> That's like polishing or something like that, perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> no, I can't really say that I have used the speed settings now. Um, no. I I'm, I almost said that the uh, orbital sander was a a thing that. Uh, that was a, a bad buy because I, I so seldom used it oh, because really? I so seldom I I don't like sanding and I, I seldom <laughs> do big flat things and I mean the the table project is dead evidence that I'm bad at sanding obviously <laughs> so yeah if I, if I make something out of wood the orbital sanders coming out definitely every time <laughs> It is nice, but I'm, I'm probably not using it. I'm, I'm seldom sanding large flat areas. So on the table, of course, I'm using it on the edge. And then, of course, I always angle it because I use the tip to and put some pressure on it. You just really yeah. get the the, <laughs> the glue marks off and so on. And that's not the way you're supposed to use it. And for, yeah. of course, any piece of wood that is not as wide as the base of the sander, it's basically not what you're supposed to do because you will never get a straight flat. You will always wobble a bit and you round over the edges. But of course, if you want to round over the edges, that doesn't matter. So, yeah, yeah I suppose you've evolved. You you, may, you use mainly sheet woods anyway, don't you? And and therefore plywood, so more plywood. So you don't really. It doesn't need much sanding, does it? No, and. Uh... Of course, after if you use the right bit on the CNC or anything, I mean it's basically just some light sanding by hand on the edges. But yeah, only sanding I do is if I build something out of oak. But then it's just smaller items, so you can, you can basically sand it by hand. But uh... fair enough. I thought we were going to try to keep it on a positive note, and here we are talking about sanding. I mean, <laughs> tools. I know. Yeah, a tools yeah. is okay, but sanding. I mean, uh, there are other tools. <laughs> <laughs> and as we record this, I, I, I'm getting a, a, a Maker Central flashback because last year it was the the Eurovision Song Contest uh, final uh, at Maker Central, yeah. and at the moment when we're recording this. It's the first semi-final, uh, and Sweden is hosting this year. But we have two Norwegian boys as <laughs> the, our contribution to the uh, really? to the show. Yeah, <laughs> Marcus and Martinez, uh, two Norwegian lads who, for some reason, are are big in Sweden. So I think that's rather funny <laughs> to <laughs> to not have our own countrymen. I, I never understood Eurovision, and I thought, like, well, can you have Norwegians? I mean, is it like in football that uh, a certain amount of the team needs to be national citizens? But of course, people just move there and change the citizenship. So, yeah, no, it's... I can't. I still can't get my head around the Australia thing. <laughs> Australia are in the Eurovision. Yeah, I mean, oh, they, they are. They, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, they were going to be just the, the one time because it was like the 50th or there's some kind of celebration. I don't remember yeah. what, but then they enjoyed it so much. So they get, <laughs> they get to tag along every year. And I mean, they, they had some good, good numbers. Yeah. So, yeah. I haven't, and, I haven't seen it on purpose since I lived back home with my parents, basically. So of course, uh, it feels a bit hollow to boycott it this year because of, uh, I think, the, the Norwegian bro broadcasting uh, company. Um, they said that they, they won't accept or allow any uh, public uh, markings uh, with regards to the Palestinian flag or something. But, I mean, uh, letting Israel join and uh, promote themselves, that, that is fine. So it's... <laughs> 
I'm just yeah. going to boycott it out of that. But if you haven't watched it for the last 15 years, I mean, is it really a boycott? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> no. That was like the uh, during the pandemic. So, oh, I oh, I have to stay at home. I can't go to work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Woe is me. <laughs> but you're always home. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of miss the pandemic. I mean, uh, I enjoyed the pandemic. Yeah. It was brilliant. <laughs> we drew the long straws when it comes to that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I still went to work. Yeah, you had no problem. Yeah, I still went to work. The roads were quiet. Fuel was cheaper. And everybody was just so happy to see me because I was the only person in the outside world <laughs> they were seeing. <laughs> Maybe that was the hard part, that people wanted to interact with you. Yeah. But then you had one, no, stay away. <laughs> you can't come any closer. I call the police on you. Yes, yeah, that's it. <laughs> It seems like a long time ago now, doesn't it? Yeah, a lifetime ago, but it's just a couple of years. Yeah. Well, well you can always hope for a new one. So, uh... <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's so bad. You can't say that. But still, it feels like you... Yeah. <laughs> but still, you agree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can, we, can we create a fake one where no one gets hurt? <laughs> yeah. That that would be preferable. There's just a danger of death, but no actual risk of it, really. <laughs> <laughs> Threaten everybody. Stay inside or I'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I do not miss uh, queuing up for the shops and washing the shopping, though. That was a pain in the ass. <laughs> washing the shopping? Yeah, you're supposed to wash your shopping. That sounds weird. Yeah. We didn't do anything like that. No. No. But we, yeah. then again, we had pretty yeah. I, not strict rules uh, in Sweden. Yeah. So yeah, no, um, it's uh, it's not something I participated in very often. <laughs> <laughs> I just send you a picture on WhatsApp. I think for something I I think is weird at least that popped up around here. And it's a, a place where you can, you see in the pictures, uh, like, oh, yeah. what's like 12, 14 trailers of different yeah. kinds, a boat trailer with uh, the big ones. The It's 12. The, yeah. Uh, and it's, <laughs> this is something where you can buy a trailer 24 seven. Is that really something that's useful? Do you get three o'clock in the morning? Oh, I have to buy a trailer. <laughs> you mean if this was a rent a trailer, that would seem like a, a a reasonable thing. But buy a trailer at any time of the day <laughs> via some app or something like that. Yeah, and how do you do it with registration? Because I mean, you need to register it. I don't have sure. a clue how that works. <laughs> you have to register it. Yeah, yeah if it's. Uh, Otherwise, you can all drive like 30 kilometers an hour with it if it's an unregistered. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, think I think we just have to slap a registration plate, a batching plate to your car on the back of it. No, we need to have a separate registration number if you're going to use it on public roads. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, no, that's not the case here. But if you look at the one to the lower right with the, the hood, <laughs> um, I actually want one of those covers for my trailer. <laughs> and I, I have a trailer of similar size like this, and I, I think I paid. I don't remember what I paid, but uh, I mean, the cover costs almost as much as the rest of the trailer. So it's insane. And it's just a plastic, uh, hot molded. Uh... Tub of the right size. Yeah. Yeah. And that's really annoying. I mean, for that price, I, I can build it in plywood and use gold screws and gold plating and whatever I mean, yeah. gold screws aren't really that good i would think <laughs> no they're, they're a bit uh, on the softer side but, 
you want titanium because you want it to not weigh that much. I mean, how much are we talking for one of these covers? Is it would it be worth buying one of those really big three D printers which are now available? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, do. I, I, I think I paid around. I think I paid around a thousand dollars or pounds for my trailer, and that cover costs uh, about eight to 900 so it's yeah it's like 90 percent of the cost of the trader it's insane and it's i mean that's not a complicated thing i mean wheels and axles and brakes and hitches and good welds and that sort of thing that's yeah that's legit legit yeah. it should cost something but just a plastic tub like half a septic tank <laughs> That's a hell of an injection mold, though, isn't it, for the company that's making it? Yeah, but still. <laughs> yeah, but what it? I mean, it, that's. I'm pretty sure that's the same that you can get at a garden center. They just flip it the other way, and it's a it's a garden pond uh, of various sizes. I mean, we have one of those as well. I've got a good idea. You're a boat guy. Why don't you just buy a boat and stick that on top? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's a that's a decent one. And you just flip it yeah. and uh, head out to the lake. Yeah, <laughs> I mean that's genuinely not a bad idea, surely. Yeah, <laughs> that should work. Yeah, and you can just use the trailer on the boat ramp. You can just <laughs> drive it yeah, in exactly, and it just yeah. turn it around. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> just have to find the right size. You know, then I have the the long uh, stick uh, lawn uh, hedge uh, trimmer motor, so I can use as an engine. So yeah, yeah. I have almost yeah. everything I need. Sorted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can just, I mean, you can weld it yourself out of aluminium sheets as well. Yeah, but given the price of aluminium sheets, it's going to be just as expensive as. Uh... <laughs> yeah. You have to make your own sheets by collecting uh, beer cans and crushing them together and, <laughs> and welding them together to a sheet and then make a boat out of it. Layering up aluminium foil. <laughs> <laughs> that would be an interesting video, I would say. <laughs> How many layers would you need to make it go stiff? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what he said. <laughs> Oh. Are we back on branded condoms? <laughs> <laughs> How thick are aluminum foil? Hmm. Oh, I think it's uh... really, really thin. Yeah. So yeah, that's. You need a few yeah. layers, and how? But how do you bond the layers? I mean, uh... epoxy. Yeah, but I don't. I think. Uh... I, I, I've done I've done some casting <laughs> with epoxy and so on, and aluminium's full. Of, I mean, I made plugs out of various styrofoam and so on, and uh, what sort of plugs? Yeah, to make molds and so on, uh, oh, okay. and uh, in fiberglass. And epoxy is not as bad as polyester; that really eats up any styrofoam or anything. So you need to yeah. cover it with aluminium foil, uh, and that's also brilliant because it makes the f the form separate very well from the epoxy. So I don't think epoxy is going to work as a layer between the aluminium. Thin layer of plywood. <laughs> Tack yeah. it on. Or just, or just veneering plywood a bit with yeah. aluminium foil. <laughs> yeah. Is it, is it that terrible? <laughs> Might look good. I don't yeah. know. What about waterproof wood glue would hold um, hold the aluminium foil on the plywood, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> or you could just uh, drape uh, a big garbage bag over it and just fill it with these uh, expanding uh, foam until it uh, rises <laughs> up to the exact shape and you just wait and, uh, <laughs> and then you just dig it out from the other side and then you have a... <laughs> 
<laughs> so many brilliant ideas. You can really tell that uh, the clock is ticking closer to pumpkin hour. <laughs> <laughs> it's best if we if we cut it here, I think, because it's just going to get worse and not in a good way. <laughs> it was just starting to get good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, uh... Is it going to be see you at Maker Central? Yeah. Yeah. We still are just a couple of days away now. Yeah. Half pint. Yes, if you listen yes. to the half pint, uh, just a couple of days after it's yeah. released. Uh, if it's after Maker Central, then I hope it was nice meeting you there. Perhaps if you were, and not if you were on the other side of the world. Then I understand that you didn't come. The next recording we do, we can ask people how they how they're liking Maker Central. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be there. <laughs> yeah, and and. and to all our listeners, uh, if you see me, especially, I can't talk to, for the other boys, uh, please come and say hi. And uh, I'm all for uh, hugs as well. I'm a hugger. Uh, so feel yeah. free. If you if you want a hug, just take one. And if anybody has any complaints about the podcast, also see KJ. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I will be writing up a memo and sending it to Glenn. <laughs> Oh, it's likewise all up for the hugs and come and say hello. And if you have complaints, feel free. Of course, uh, you'll still get a mention, but we can't guarantee uh, how it's going to look on your end. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Good night. All right. Good, good night. night. Bye. 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 <laughs> ring, ding, ding, ring, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah.